Hello guys, welcome back to another video. This one is going to be slightly longer than the usual tutorials because there are kind of a few steps to take here. So what we are going to do now is to transfer some crypto from the Ethereum chain to the Polygon chain. And let me quickly show you the wallet here. Um, we are now on the Ethereum network, great. And I do have some crypto available here that I could transfer over to the Polygon network, which is right here, Polygon mainnet. Now, I have a separate video on how to make this Polygon menu visible. And I think if you have never used Polygon before, this may be interesting to watch first. But given that you are familiar with Polygon and you are actually interested in using a game or some kind of project on Polygon and you need some crypto for that, you may be in the position where you want to transfer some of that crypto from the Ethereum network to Polygon. And let's just see how this would actually work. So if you head over to wallet.polygon.technology, this is the actual website of Polygon, there is this subsection of the site called Polygon Bridge. And if you log into the Polygon bridge section of the site, and I do have a separate video on how to log in into a Web3 website for those just starting out. But in this case, we were able to quickly and automatically log back in to the site. As you can see, we can see the Ethereum address here, which means we are logged in. And you can also see that it recognizes the crypto that I have on the Ethereum chain and it wants to know how much I want to transfer over to the Polygon chain. So in theory, we could just transfer all of my crypto over to Polygon, but I won't do that. I will transfer only just a tiny bit. Let's say something like that. And if I click on transfer, it will let us know that it will take up to 30 minutes for this bridging process to complete. And there are a couple of steps within that bridging process that happen. And yes, it does take a little bit of time and it does cost a transaction fee, which sometimes can be a little bit elevated. Let's click on continue. As you can see, it is estimating quite a high price to complete this transaction. Now, normally the actual transaction cost is going to be much lower. For some reason, it is estimating it that high. Um, in this case, let's just see anyways and continue. And as you can see, if you want to transfer total value of 1.3 US dollars here, it still estimates a $9 transaction cost and about 10 to 30 minutes time. Let's just see and if, if we can get a better estimate of the transaction cost and click continue. Transaction in process. Interesting is to see that the estimates are always changing a little bit, but what I'm mostly interested in is if the transaction cost has come down and it has come down significantly. So initially it estimated it to be almost 10 USD and now it's three and a half. This is still very expensive to spend three and a half dollars to transfer one and a half dollars. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to do this. And if you are transferring a larger amount, let's say a thousand dollars or $10,000, it's definitely worth to pay for this service. Let's just click confirm. Now the transaction is pending and it's going to probably take, you know, let's just give it some time and see what happens next. Okay, Can, transaction is now completed and the bridging has started and that bridging process is probably going to take 20 to 30 minutes. So I will pause the video and I will restart once the transaction has completed. Okay, we are now roughly 30 minutes later. One thing has changed here. There was a um, pending symbol 
just next to transactions right here. It has now gone away roughly 25 minutes later. However, we are still not in completed status here. So I'm getting a little bit impatient and what I want to do is to actually just close this window for now and actually go into the wallet and see if anything has changed. So there is some Matic here and I'm a little bit curious why that is because I haven't transferred any Matic but it has come from somewhere. So one thing I want to do now is to actually add a token here. Since we have sent over Ethereum to Polygon we should have a token that is called wrapped Ethereum visible here and we will probably need to add it first. So let me quickly search for wrapped ethereum contract address polygon and let's go to polygon scan and let's copy this contract address here let's go back to the metamask wallet on polygon mainnet and let's import a token by pasting that wrapped ethereum contract address in here it adds the symbol automatically let's add the custom token import all right so what is interesting here now is that we do have some wrapped ethereum in my account that has been transferred over we did send only one dollar so it has actually arrived okay so this is really interesting the transaction has gone through the Ethereum that I had sent from the Ethereum network to Polygon has arrived. Let's quickly check on that once again. I am on the Polygon mainnet and I currently have 1.34 US dollars of Ethereum or wrapped Ethereum on Polygon. So everything worked out as expected. If I go back to the Ethereum network I still have the remaining balance here. So I did send out $1.30. I paid roughly $3.5 for the transaction fee for the bridging service. And I have the remainder here in my Ethereum account. And this $1 of wrapped Ethereum now is on Polygon. So this is correct. What really surprised me is that there is an actual airdrop from Polygon to give you a little bit of liquidity in Matic so that you can make a first transaction so that you can actually send some of your crypto or exchange it for a different crypto using a decentralized exchange. This is actually pretty cool that they airdrop a little bit of liquidity so you can transact on the network. And um, I actually did go to Polygon Scan to check on that. And if you look at the transactions, there is a Polygon airdrop of 0.1 Matic and this was really surprising. I wasn't expecting that. I haven't done this with a Virgin account in a long time, but this is actually pretty smooth that not only do I have now some wrapped Ethereum that I bridged over, but I also have a possibility to make one or two transactions on the Matic network by them gifting me some token here. This is very cool. All right, guys, this is how the bridging of Ethereum works. If you want to send Ethereum back from Polygon to the Ethereum network, it's also possible. It just takes significantly more time. I believe it is up to three hours. And please note that when you do the final transaction on the Ethereum network to take your Ethereum from the bridge checkpoint back into your wallet this is where the big transaction cost is being incurred so you need to have sufficient ethereum in your wallet in order to finalize that transaction and if you don't have that your money will be stuck at the checkpoint and you will first need to find some ethereum to pay the gas fees so when you send the money back from polygon to ethereum it takes time and it also costs money. 
Now, of course, if you send such micro amounts like I did now, this doesn't pay off. If you transfer a larger amount of crypto, then these costs are negligible. All right, guys, I hope this was useful. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and do like the video for me to be able to show this information to more people joining the Cryptoverse. Thank you and I see you in the next video. Bye bye.